Previously on the Never Stop Tour 2, presented by Carl's Bait and Tackle. If you guys want to cop this merch, it will be in our link in the description. You also can win an amazing fully rigged bass boat. Fully rigged. Fully rigged bass boat. And you get to come fishing with John and I. Oh. No way. No way. He has a spotty. Oh. A little spotty. <laughs> Oh, nice oh, one! Man. Get him in the boat! Yeah! yeah. Look at that one! Oh, Woo God, Look man. at that one, bro! Oh, my God. That's the quality right there. That's a chunk right there. That thing is fat! We have officially made it to Cabo San Lucas. Never Stop to me is more of a reminder. Go and do something new. Never stop exploring, never stop fishing, never stop going to the unknown. We don't have any idea what we're getting ourselves into. Two high school buddies grab some rods, hook the boat, hop in a car, and travel to places neither of us have ever been to. I just got a feeling it's gonna get worse. Not this again, are you kidding me? He's on, that's another big one. Get in there! That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna shock you, I'm gonna shock you. I suppose next time we'll see you guys, we'll be in a different state on the ocean. He's coming out from the lake, watch out, watch out, he's coming out, there he is! Oh my god! Oh my god! Welcome to the Never Stop Tour 2. I'm currently laying down in a hotel room in the beautiful country of Mexico, looking at the palm tree swaying, just thinking, wow, this is about to be the best trip ever. It's already been the best trip ever. We've literally, it, we've caught fish, we haven't had too many hiccups, and it's just, life's good. Currently about 5 a.m. We are about to take a six-hour road trip of the coast of the Baja California Peninsula. We're after some crazy fish. Um, definitely fish I've never targeted before, and never been like I've never been this part of Mexico. We're going into small towns. We're going into rural Mexico, places that are untouched by fishermen. And I'm excited to see what we. Can So here we are in Laredo. We got some traditional pollo. We're gonna take this to the beach, do some exploring, do some fishing, maybe some swimming, some snorkeling, kind of get acclimated here in Mexico and then um, make things happen. Um, I talked to the captain guy for tomorrow. We're all, we're all good. He said they've been catching good fish on the backside of that island. Uh, grouper? Uh, grouper. Oh, he said quite sick. a bit of grouper. He said uh, most of them are like in the 14 pound range, 15 pound range, Whoa. and then there's they caught a couple that were 20 pounds, um, and some snapper mixed in, and there was some small yellowtail too that were really so, feeding at the uh, by the islands. Yeah, it, is the possibility of getting off on the boat still like? Yeah, we can. Um, I I mentioned to him about um, hopping off um, on the island and like throwing on a spot where he thought it would be good. Nice. Um, He's like, yeah, for sure we can do that. We're basically gonna work the coast and then, um, and then get over. Awesome. Uh, the audio was royally f by him eating the chicken nuggets. <laughs> Wes was talking. Wes was going over the day, and he goes like, he starts playing with the chicken. <laughs> Yo, those are some good Papa's free dust. I don't know what they're doing to those fries, but they're good <laughs> as hell. <laughs> mm. We're gonna finish all of our delicious. Lunch <laughs> Made it. 
Um, Kirk and I are going to do a little bit of refishing. We haven't really touched salt water since we've been here in Baja, California, so we're going to do that right now. I ran over here real quickly. We brought one box of tackle out of John's boat before it left us, <laughs> and there's one eliminator in there and one jig head. Doesn't that look just... Something's going to eat that. Something's going to eat it. Something's going to eat that. We've got some swim baits. We've got some little bull sheds in here, too, and a couple small crankbaits, but this is literally the only plastic, I mean the only plastic we have. Right now I'm throwing the baby bull shed. This is the lure that we started this Never Stop Tour on, and now we're gonna end it on it. Just gonna kinda catch some little fish, have some fun. Um, no, I'm not wearing a white t-shirt. It's just uh, it's just that I, I'm, I'm extremely white, and I think I've got a lot of Norwegian blood in me. So every time I go out in the sunshine, I look like this. What, what's going on? Set it. Ooh. Oh, wait, I saw that. Yeah. What was going on? There he is. Awesome. Okay, let me help you. Yeah, throw right there, throw right there. No, gonna... Oh my god! It was a blue trivali. What, you got bit off? Oh, it blew off. Oh my god. Okay, hey, either that or a jack, I guess. Really? That's the shot. No what is it? I don't know. Oh, it's a little rock out. Look at this, baby. Sick! First oh, fish! Right there on the eliminator. I figured I need to drag this bait slowly. I just had another big fish come in. My my bass bait, the eliminator, comes back and gets no. What happened? It's over. What? The last eliminator is gone. No that's the, that's it. This is our last one we have. I might throw this still. It's like a little turd. It's a little TRD rig now. But um, my first fish here in Mexico. Something I've never caught before, I'm gonna get back in the water. Well, obviously you guys can tell we're fishing salt water. It's a little bit windy coming in here, but that was insane. It's been at least, it's been literally five minutes. Got our first fish. Unfortunately, like I've already said, I only had one of those baits, so. Now, I wanna fish slow on the bottom, you know? It's two o'clock in the afternoon. Tide's at say probably. What is the tide going out probably? Yeah, tide's going out right now. What, coming in? Oh, tide's coming in. So those fish, you know, Towards dark, towards once the sun gets down, this fish will probably come up high in the water column and start eating. But right now, I'm gonna try and work the bottom um, with my little TRD rig now. John, John's, John's got something. Oh, oh, so sick. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Look at oh my god, okay. So right after Parrot caught that little um, little grouper, little cod, whatever it is, I caught this mangrove snapper, or like a mangrove jack or whatever. Such a cool fish. That ate a baby bull shad which is lure we were throwing for bass just like uh, two weeks ago when we started this deal. So crazy, really cool looking fish. They've got absolutely gnarly teeth and they're full of piss and vinegar as you can see there. I'm gonna get them unhooked and show you guys a up close look at this guy. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, well after after I took the, the, the bait out of his mouth, Wes and I are determining that this probably isn't a snapper, it most likely is uh, a Kibera snapper. I, I guess I should say not a mangrove snapper, but a Kibera snapper, which would make my first ever fish First ever, I can't even speak, that's so cool. This would make my first ever Kibera snapper. Uh, not the size that I hope to catch, but I'm welcoming towards this bite. Look at the chompers on that guy. Talk about a vicious fish. So gnarly. Oh, give me a little kiss. Come on. Wes was doing some dope B-rollage from across the uh, the point, and I got another snapper. A lot bigger than the first one. This guy honestly fought me so good. I wish we had the camera over here because it got me in a rock. I had to like get it out of the rock. Very intense. It's so funny how a fish this big can fight so much harder just because it, it it's grown up in current and salt water. You know, grow up. I like spent a lot of my time fishing in Illinois, so I've never really had the treat to target these amazing, beautiful. Oh god, he's gonna get angsty. Chill out. These amazing, beautiful, and very vicious saltwater species. That is my third fish of the day. So sick. That's gotta be a Kibera. Look at that face, man. Off he goes. So cool. That was so awesome. I wish you guys were there for that fight. 
I literally was like standing right where I'm at now, threw over there to two cranks with the baby bull shad from um, Ketchco, and this thing just goes freaking eats, set the hook. I'm using a 7.3 ultralight rod, a 7.3 ultralight rod that's meant for drop shot fishing for a small mouth and large mouth, and that thing just went. Let's see if we can catch some more. That's my third snapper of the day, and uh, we really didn't expect to catch too much in the first place. My favorite parts about saltwater fishing is like you can pretty much come out here with little to no actual saltwater fishing knowledge and still get bit. Like I didn't grow up fishing for these fish. I have actually no idea what I just caught here, but um, like it worked. I'm throwing a, a, a shad bait meant for largemouth, and they're still super bitey. This guy is crazy looking. Look at those <laughs> so cool. Pull up to a beach, never fished here before. Chuck some bass gear around and have a sick little day of micro fishing. This is a lot of fun. Like, if you guys don't saltwater fish, you really need to do so because this is uh, this is quite an experience. That's all I got to say. Um, uh, well, well, this is fun. I'm a little concerned. I don't know where Alex Perrick is at right now. I've been fishing this whole beach and I have not seen, heard, or uh, even like noticed a sign of him. He was fishing with me and then he just kind of disappeared. So. Um, Probably should figure out where Alex is because it's a huge essential part of this trip. If we don't have Alex, then it's not really a never stop tour, is it? So I'm gonna take some more casts and head back to camp, see if I can find him. Like, I'm not even kidding, I have no clue where the kid is at. So we're just gonna swim bait a little bit more and locate AP Bassin. Bud's taking a nap. Why is he so afraid of me? I was told I could relax. And that's what I was doing. Who told you you could relax? Weston. Wes? You told me you could relax? But well, we found Alex. There's two Wes's. We found Alex. He was doing what Alex always does. Doing the absolute bare minimum. <laughs> Let me got see really that. I'm really pissed. I wrote my new Lululemons. Got, I'm pissed. I'll All I heard was I'm pissed in Lululemons. And I turned over and I see a... A boot, those a brand worst, new boot. Those are the worst boots I've ever worn. With a swim bait in it. Anyway, we know what Alex has been up to. A whole lot of nothing. Incoming is Wes, our guide. He just uh, got finished doing some snorkeling. Basically doing all the heavy labor as Alex and I just catch some rays. And my catch rays, I mean, get burnt. I'm burnt right now. But hopefully he's got some fish. I don't know what we're going to do with the fish. I guess we'll probably cook it up. Really? I got a bunch of scallops. Scallops, really? Yeah. Oh, sick. Can you eat those? Yeah. I got a little. No way. <laughs> any, any, shoot any? What? Shoot any fish? I saw one yellow tail go by. Really? It was, it went we saw some fast. stuff on the beach that were like, they look like uh, mullet, but they're. Yeah, they're big mullet. They're big mullet. Yeah. yeah. Well. Weston didn't shoot any, or, yeah, Wes didn't shoot any fish, but he did get some scallops and um, brand new lure. Oh, wow, what the? Dude, yeah. that looks delicious. Big scallop. How do you, um... Can we cook them right now on the beach with a fire? Yeah, if you have something to make a fire with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah? What do you have a fire, what are you going to make a fire with? Give me something to make Two sticks. Yeah. Uh, so Wes just got some scallops, and it would be super dope if we could cook them on the beach. And there's a group over there that has a van, and I'm going to go ask them if they have anything to cook those scallops with or start a fire with. Have you ever cooked a scalp? No, I've never cooked a scalp. Hey, that makes both of us. Put it there. Um. Hmm. We we made a fire. We Step got the one. fire. The fire's done. Step one. Wes catches the scallops. That's done. We found a random pan. I mean, Step what are the odds of that? Yeah, that's not so random. <laughs> There's a van behind us that provided that pan, but step two, we built the fire. Step three, we found the pan. Step four is probably going to be the challenging part. You have to learn how to cook a, a scallop. 
on a beach. We definitely need some oil and we definitely need some salt. Yeah. We definitely need to like learn how to do this because I've never done this. Should we wash them off? No. no. On there. Yeah. What? Scallops are done! That's so dynamite. Oh my gosh. So we got this guy for dinner. Remember, uh, took my little lure I found out. Went out to the corner out there. And it was like four casts in. This thing hit right on the surface, just busted up, did a huge, huge bust up. And this is actually John's little rod. Which and is great. It's a medium this thing, light. Yeah, this thing is so light. It's like, I mean, you can see the, the tip on this thing is like, it was like a swizzle stick. So we decided, um, if you guys didn't connect the dots, there were two girls staying in a van next to us and they were able to give us a pot, a pan, some salt, like everything to cook those scallops. And in return, we're gonna give them Wes's fish. We're gonna play it for them. That way we kind of give them something for letting us borrow their stuff, so. It's kind of the way of the ocean, you know, the way of the Cabo life, and let's fly this fish. This is it, the beach life is gonna be pretty much over starting now. I head back to our hotel room in uh, Laredo. Is it Laredo? Yep. People want to call it Laredo, like Texas, but it's Laredo with a T. So head back to Laredo. Um, got to experience beach life here in Cabo. This is awesome. Caught some fish, ate some scallops. Did like a, a catch and cook. It's been a while since we did something like that um, on this journey. So that was fun. And then we're also going to get prepped up for tomorrow's mission because we're going to go after some bigger fish, some grouper, some snappers. I don't really know. I, I don't really know the game plan. All I know is we're going for bigger fish with bigger gear out there in a boat. So uh, let's uh, round up and get you guys back at the hotel. Morning. We just officially got our fishing licenses here in Cabo for the day. Um, the whole trip, I, know, I don't know if we mentioned this, but it was supposed to be the land. We were supposed to be on the land most of the day. But today we had a little bit of problem with the tides and the weather. So we drove south. Yesterday you guys saw we kind of chilled on a beach, cooked some scallops, did some crazy things. And today we're going out on a small boat six hours north of Cabo um, to try and catch grouper, snapper, maybe even rooster fish, anything that really bites. But to, tomorrow and the next day is when we go from land to try and catch these fish. So today we're going into a boat um, six hours north of Cabo. And, you know, the crazy thing about fishing the ocean is you never know what you're going to catch. There's so many different species, so many different things are going to hit lures, artificial, and that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So it should be a good day. We're out of the water right now, we're on the drink. Juan, our captain, is, uh, is scooping up some sardines, which are a little bit smaller than the ones that we saw in San Diego. I don't know if you guys remember, we used sardines in San Diego for the calicos, and we attempted to use them for yellowtail. They're about that big. These ones are a little bit smaller. Uh, they're about that big, and we're gonna use that to kind of get the school fish like riled up on the reefs, right? Yep. Is that what you would suggest? Okay, that's what probably the game plan is. Again, I'm taking information from Wes and these guys, and then relaying it to you, so I'm not exactly the Cabo saltwater fishing expert, but I hope to be by the time we're done with this day. We're looking for big fish today. Did you mention we're looking for big fish? Uh, yeah, I mentioned Big that. fish that like could guys. eat you. Ooh. Uh, Today's all about throwing big baits. Throughout this entire trip, we've of course been fishing for largemouth calicos and uh, a myriad of other like decent sized fish, but from here on out, we're going solely after giants. 
monster 8,000 size reels, heavy rods, and uh, of course, enormous lures. The one specific species that we're trying to target right now is this fish called a leopard grouper, which I've never caught before. I probably have seen like maybe a few pictures of, so I'm really interested to see how they fight. Um, Peric and I are like definitely still in drop shot jig mode, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be prepared for <laughs> one of these fish to take us into the reef. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna check these big baits around, see if we can pack with some fish. Peric might even dabble with some live bait because his name is Peric and everybody loves live bait. We're just gonna have fun. Why make it more challenging than it has to be, folks? It's, it's just, I'm here for one thing and one thing only, to fill the meat locker. <laughs> fill the meat locker. But he's hooked up. What does he got? There's a fish. Fish out. Fish out. Yeah, there we go, baby. Monster. Absolutely instantly with that live sardine. Today is not going to be about live bait fishing, but I thought, why not? There was an open rod, there was an open hook. Might as well throw it on there and see what happens. Take a couple more casts with that live bait just to see what comes out. And John and Wes are throwing big baits at these rocks, so something's going to happen. Yeah, I got him. Yeah. I don't know. Fighting good? It felt like a rock and then it just made a... Oh, it's little, it's little. What is it? What is it? Oh, sick. Dude. What is it? Oh, gosh, look at that thing. Both of us have pockfish, Wes and myself. Right there is my first ever pockfish, just an absolute gorgeous looking thing. I always say that about fish, but especially this one. Like, look at the coloring, the spots. Oh, oh, Gooper, Gooper, come on, come on, catch it, catch it, catch it. There we go, I'm on, Gooper. Gooper, Gooper. There we go, there we go, there we go. So sick, that was so sick. There we go. <laughs> Is that a leopard or? Yeah, it's a leopard. Sick, we did it. <laughs> All right, this is it. This is the fish we were after. It's one species that we came out here was leopard. The one species that we came out here for is a leopard grouper. It's kind of a cool fish. How big do they get? They get pretty large? Yeah, they get about three times that big. Oh my God, that thing fought yeah. me pretty hard too. On heavy setup with a And you got a lure hook. too. Yeah, and the lure just crushed yeah. it, so. Eric's fishing the bait and you're out fishing. <laughs> For the first time ever this entire trip, we got a bigger fish opposed to Peric, but that's not what it's all about. We're just trying to get some good fish. Oh, no, that's, that's what it's all about. <laughs> about. Just one up at each other. <laughs> that was a sick fish. Woo! <laughs> he just came Dude, they that. kick, man. Those are powerful <laughs> fish. <laughs> Woo! All right. Another feels good. Needle fish. Oh, <laughs> what is that? Dude, that is the craziest looking thing I've ever seen. This is one of the craziest fish I've ever caught just because of the way it looks. Look at this. This fish wasn't even hooked. I mean, now it's hooked, but. He wasn't even hooked. Like, look at this. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh, bait's still alive. 
So this is considered a trumpet fish? Yeah. Okay. Trumpet fish. Rotate the, the top down. Yeah. Check out those stripes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it looks like a dang snake in the water. This is the fish we've been after this whole trip, and we just came to get some bait to bring back to Cabo because we're about to head off. We were, we were literally ending the day grabbing some bait, and we found the smallest school of rooster fish ever, and they're just... Wait till you see this fish. Oh, what is that? Oh, that's a big one. Oh my gosh! That's such... That is so cool. It's a super mini... Like, they're called rooster fish because of that crazy antennas they have coming off the top that makes them kind of look like a, a Thank rooster. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Essentially. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. But look at that. And I think they get, you know, 20, 30, 40. How big do they get? What's the biggest rooster you've got? 96. 96 pounds. These fish get up to 96 pounds. Just a little baby, and there's a school of them right now. So, Johnny, I get one. How big is he? I don't know if he's pulling your drag. Oh wow. How's that drag? Is that good? Yeah, it's good. I mean, come on. Hell yeah. Come on. Get him. Is it Get actually him. a rooster? Honestly, something crazy happened. We. I don't. What is it, dude? What is it? It's like you don't have anything on. Oh, I see it now. Fighting it off. Fighting on the old two piece bait casting rod here. Yeah. Is it a jack? I think so. Is it a jack? It's a jack. It's a yellow. It's a yellow tail. Yellow tail. In the boat. Baby! <laughs> we tried to catch these in San Diego and we couldn't do it. <laughs> we tried to catch these fish in San Diego. We ended up failing like miserably. I was just, re I threw my live sardine out there and was just reeling it in and this fish just clocked it. You can lip these ones, right? Yeah, you're good. You can hold them like by the tail too. My first yellowtail ever. Caught it on my rod, which is pretty cool. Two-piece travel bass rod, able to catch saltwater okay. fish. And just this thing put up a crazy fight. 20 pound foil carbon, landed her. Oh my gosh, just crazy. I couldn't imagine Dude. catching one like three, four, five times as big as yeah, this. Yeah, that's thing. like that's like a this little is like a baby. One. This yeah, is a, a baby. Little baby. This is a little baby. Brand new. It's a sick fish. Well, Stinky and I just crushed some uh, tacos al camarón. Is it al camarón? <laughs> wow, you're really close to me right now. E, 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 e pescado. E, e pescado and pescado tacos. E pescado tacos. You missed the tacos part after the pescado. But it was good. We had some, we caught some seafood. We ate some seafood. Now we're going to head all the way back to Cabo. It's a 
It's a four hour drive in Wes's mind, but it's actually a six hour drive, believe it or not. So we have to drive through the Baja, which is actually a really cool drive. You're driving through like this desert surrounded by water. It's such a surreal concept. Uh, and then once we get there, I was. I was. He was asleep. I'm definitely going to be asleep for this one too. So <laughs> Then we're going to get ready for tomorrow's fishing mission. But tacos were amazing. We feel fueled. We feel ready for tomorrow's mission. We'll catch you guys then. Stick with us. Stay tuned. And keep fishing. Never stop. So this is it. We traveled over 2,600 miles five states and two countries to get to this very beach right here. This is the pinnacle of the trip. This is where we wanted to end things on the Never Stop Tour. I think we did, I think we did kind of a poor job of explaining what actually was going on here when we went to Cabo, but Wes is a dude that I met over the internet just like a few months ago, and uh, he really intrigued me with what he does. He actually doesn't guide off of a boat. He doesn't guide off of a big rig. He guides strictly off of this sand right here. He does all land-based big fishing, and he does something that a lot of people I've never even heard of, let alone never even fathomed of doing, and that's what we're gonna to attempt to do today. That being, trying to catch ginormous saltwater fish from the shoreline with 12 foot rods, big lures, and uh, a little amount of experience. So this is the first morning that we've gotten a chance to do this. It is extremely windy. The conditions are quite interesting. We have a very small window of time to catch fish. The tide starts now and ends right around 10 a.m. So we gotta make the most of it, start making some heavy casts and see what we can do. Hey guys, John's over there, climbing some rocks. I really want to catch a rooster fish, so I'm, I've been casting. I'm kind of looking right now to see if I can see one. It's a bit windy, a bit wavy, but it's a bit fun out here. That was an incredible team effort. I don't know how much of that was on film, but essentially what happened is I hooked this jack and Cabrera missed it. This jack came in for the uh, for the sloppy seconds, <laughs> caught him, got right to the rocks, was about to land, he popped off, the waves pushed him back up, he dove in, he went full Michael Phelps on this fish, grabbed the fish after it had been unhooked, and here we are with the full land job. That was insane. It was caught twice, essentially. Once by rod, the other by hand. Just a big brute jack, probably my biggest jack from shore. This is why we came here to Cabo to catch big burly fish from the sketchy rocks and the mega beaches. <laughs> that is insane, dude. That was nuts. Is that the craziest thing you've ever done in a while? I Probably, mean, yeah. Like, yeah. That was, yeah, one of the one of the top things. Wow. Man, I was up to my waist in the water. That thing hit me in the legs coming up with that wave. Yeah, I like was looking. My from my perspective, it was nuts because I was on top of the rock. I'm like, oh my god, dude, this is just <laughs> unbelievable. We're gonna snap some pictures and then get this guy on his way and maybe catch a few more fish, hopefully some red ones and some different colored fish. That's just so cool though. Yeah. Big burly jack. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. I'm trying just to survive right now. No! Oh, I saw him. Oh, oh. Oh, shoot. Oh my gosh, yes! Holy cow, guys. My first fish officially from the shore. I walked back over here. I was, I broke. Oh, baby. Big Cubera snapper. Just absolutely crushed it. I couldn't even talk while I was fighting this fish because I thought I was going to go in the water. Just epic chaos, but I'm glad we landed it. Unfortunately, the fish got hooked in the gill, so we're going to keep this one, but... It's going to make really good dinner. Really good dinner. Yeah. scenarios completely yeah the scenery looks now almost like a Egypt. desert yeah it looks like we're in egypt because we've got <laughs> camels in front of us it's like a full-on desert it's so weird how baja it's like this this peninsula that is essentially mountainous deserts and then surrounded by it is lush water full of ginormous fish that are that are just straight lurking but um wes is scoping out the, the scene looking for some bait literally in the truck we're just driving on the beach right now this is so sick and, <laughs> Dude, super legit too. Like they've got the. Uh... We made it to spot number two. Um, John's out there casting right now. We're switching up lures. I threw this lure a little bit at the last spot while John was fishing on the rocks. To think that this is a top water actually, it kind of skips across the surface. It's unbelievable what this thing can do. We're targeting rooster fish now. Rooster fish are the, it's a small fish I caught yesterday. It got kind of like a huge dorsal fin coming out, and hopefully we get one. That's really the reason why we're in Cabo is to get a rooster fish. And John is chucking, winding, and I gotta get to it too. Let's do this. Let's catch a big right now john zero decided issues. to take a red bull an espresso shot and that's not some, an issue that's a, that's a solution that's, a, that's why you're just that's talking a solution. 100 miles an hour you know so i'm happy us, i'm looking forward to catching more you're fish you're just on caffeine i'm gonna catch fish even if you were on caffeine you'd be just a write off mm -hmm. this is Perry. Mm -hmm. right off anyway um we may or may not go out tonight it that's kind of up in the air one thing is one thing that is for sure though is we're going to fish in the morning before our flight this is crazy like i never thought this tour was actually going to end hence the never stop name but uh we literally have one more day left one day here and then like a quarter of a day tomorrow so uh you know we caught fish today it was it was a success huge green check mark Ding. but i think we uh we still have some fish to be caught and we're probably we're gonna save that the for the morning ones for the last day. right grand finale right yep are you sad it's over it's not over over but it's almost over not over not <laughs> so over we're gonna rest up get some uh r and r and meet you guys back out in the water either tonight or tomorrow stick with it big roosties on the way last day in Cabo we really have like two hours to fish before we fly out can we make it happen I don't know we're gonna try and on a solid note regardless of uh you know what's going on over there the grind is starting to yeah. Just gonna, yeah. but there's still gonna be a cast aren't you
definitely on a time crunch this morning. Um, we got flights at noon. Airport's an hour away. We got to be there two hours before. You guys know the drill. Drill international flights. I mean, oh, it takes literally five seconds to get hooked up. So all I need is five seconds. One hungry rooster fish, and everything went to plan. If not, everything still went to plan. So it's been an unreal trip. I can't complain at all. Spending 21 days with your best buddy traveling across the country is just something you have to do. I would recommend it. And let's take some pass. That's it. This right here is where we end the tour. I can't believe I'm saying it. Feels like this tour was gonna go on forever, but 21 days of straight fishing and grinding and just getting after it, traveling all the way from Texas to the very southern tip of Baja, California. This was an amazing experience. I, I don't know if I've ever done anything like this. Can't wait to get on Never Stop 3. But for now, we need to get some rest. We need to get on a plane and head out of here. Um, yeah, this is just incredible. The cliche, way, the cliche way to end today would have been with like a monster fish, but that's what this, this whole tour is all about. It's like very realistic, it's peeled back. You know, it's not like we're, uh, we're fishing out here for a week just to get one fish. Like we were given two days to make it happen and we caught some good fish yesterday and it just goes to show that, you know, this is fishing. This is how it goes down. Sometimes it pans out, sometimes you get kicked in the teeth. So um, I'm gonna catch up with Perrick. I think he's, uh, he's wilding off the rocks right now. And, We'll meet you guys back on mainland. It's time to stop. We are at stop number one right now. Oh, oh yes, yes. No way. This would be a big day. Yeah. You realize that like this is our first full day. Dude, it's like in my head. It's a little light. From the Dallas Lakes to the New Mexico Rivers to up in the mountain fishing for pike to the Arizona Desert Lakes, then making it to the saltwater and fishing out for big bluefin tuna, for yellowtail, capping it off with some amazing calico bass, and then truly ending the journey in Cabo San Lucas, fishing from shore for some of the biggest and hardest fighting saltwater fish that live, which is just something you could only imagine, and then to make it all happen was incredible. We couldn't have done this amazing journey without Carl's Bait and Tackle. They're an amazing company and made everything happen from start to finish. We don't know where this whole filming, fishing, capturing journey will take us, but all we could do is keep fishing, never stop.